We continue our study in the book of Hebrews today. We are in Hebrews chapter 7. And we're going to begin our reading in verse 11. Hebrews 7, beginning at verse 11. Verse 11, if therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe, of which no man gave attendance at the altar. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. And it is yet far more evident, for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there ariseth another priest, who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. For he testifieth, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Let's go to the Lord in prayer once again. Our Father, we thank you that we uh, can gather together here this morning. What a beautiful morning you have given us, Lord. Amen. We pray that as we sit here with our Bibles open, that you will give us understanding of that which we read. I pray for myself, Lord, that you would be with me with all that I would say would bring great glory and honor to your holy name. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Paul had told the people that he had much to say about Melchizedek that was hard to be uttered, he said, because they were dull of hearing. He resumed that teaching in chapter 7, and in the first part of chapter 7, which we studied last week, Paul was showing us that Christ is superior to the Jewish high priest. To prove his point, he compares the Jewish Levitical priesthood to the priesthood of Melchizedek, that Old Testament type of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now I want to stop right here to clarify some of my teaching regarding the person of Melchizedek. Yes, he is a type of Christ, but there is a deeper understanding of who this Melchizedek is. Brother Randy came to me last week after my teaching, and he said that he understood Melchizedek to be an Old Testament theophany, or more precisely, an Old Testament Christophany. An Old Testament pre-incarnate appearance of the person of Christ himself, naturally in the form of a man. And I'm convinced that Pastor Randy is right in his understanding. When Melchizedek appeared to our father Abraham, yes, he was indeed a type, but he was much more than that. There were many illustrations of that that I found as I studied it this past week. Just a couple of them I'll repeat this morning. When Melchizedek was named King of Righteousness, Scripture plainly teaches us that there is none righteous, no, not one. To be the king of righteousness, Melchizedek would have had to be 
Christ himself, since none other has ever been righteous. To me, be without beginning of days and without end of life would be one who abides forever. The form of that word abideth means a continual abiding. Melchizedek and Christ cannot both be continually abiding. There can only be one great high priest, and that is our Lord Jesus himself. Amen. There are many other uh, illustrations of the fact that, he, that it was Christ himself in the person of Melchizedek in a pre-incarnate Christ. Uh, I have more to study in that area myself, but it just, it was so uh, enlightening to me to hear that. Now back to our text, the Apostle Paul here compares the Jewish Levitical priesthood to the priesthood of Melchizedek, that Old Testament type of Christ. Not only was Melchizedek greater than Aaron, the high priest, but his superiority is recognized by all of the priestly tribe of Levi. The whole tribe of Levi paid homage to Melchizedek because when Abraham gave tithes to Melchizedek, all of Levi was represented in the loins of Abraham. We learned last week that this is called the doctrine of federal headship. So when Abraham gave tithes to Melchizedek, the Levitical priesthood still in his loins also gave tithes to Melchizedek and honored him. And this shows that Melchizedek was greater than all of the Levitical priests. And since Jesus is a priest after the order of Melchizedek, that is our proof that the priesthood of Christ is greater than the priesthood of the sons of Levi, the Levitical priesthood. Now the implications of that to the Jew was enormous. You see, they believed that their Levitical system of priesthood was perfect. It had been instituted by God himself, so surely it must be sufficient and it must be permanent. But God now has raised up Jesus, a priest who did not belong to the tribe of Levi, these believing Hebrews that Paul is writing to here, they freely admit that Jesus Christ, by his sacrifice, put away their sins and brought them nigh unto God. That's what a priest does. He offers sacrifice and he puts away sin. He restores our fellowship with God. And that's what Jesus does. That's the glorious truth that they believed when they believed the gospel. But they didn't immediately see the implications of all of that. If their Levitical system of priesthood, if that was perfect, then why was the Lord Jesus a priest after the order of Melchizedek? If their Levitical system could produce perfection, if their old system met all of the requirements of God, then why introduce something new? Well, you see, my friends, the old Levitical system was not capable of producing perfection. So Messiah did not come from the Levitical priesthood. No, he was a priest after the order of Melchizedek who was greater than their Levitical priesthood. 
the very priesthood which their fathers had venerated for such a long time, how could it be that it has now been set aside by God himself? Paul is ready to prove that the whole mosaic system was temporary, it was inadequate, and it was defective. Now this was a pill that was difficult to swallow, even by those who had put their faith in Christ way back then. But you see, it was never the intention of God that the Levitical priesthood should remain forever. In the Old Testament scriptures, God told us about another priest of another order. Back in the beginning, back in Genesis 14, we find Melchizedek, a priest of the Most High God. Then a thousand years later, there was a prophecy which God gave to David, and we find that in Psalm 110. In that psalm, God himself greeted the Messiah with these words, Sit thou at my right hand, and then he declared, The Lord hath sworn and will not repent, thou, that is Messiah, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Messiah was to be a priest forever, and Melchizedek was simply a picture of that never-ending priesthood of the Messiah. Paul based his argument on the inspired and infallible testimony of Scripture itself in Psalm 110, and the Jews could not reject their own Scriptures. Therefore, if Christ was a priest, after the order of Melchizedek, then the Levitical priesthood must not be perfect. Otherwise, there would have been no need to introduce this change of priesthood. That's what our verse 11 here in chapter 7 says. Let's read it. Verse 11. If, therefore, perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law. What further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? So the Levitical priesthood was inadequate. The Levitical priesthood could not make the people perfect. Because if perfection came by the Levitical priesthood, then why was there need for another priest to arise after the order of Melchizedek and not after the order of Aaron? So first, what does perfection mean in this context? To be perfect, the priest must produce a satisfactory relationship he must produce a final relation between God and man. To be perfect, the priest must give you and me an unchangeable standing and in favor and in blessing and with God. The Levitical priesthood could do neither of these things. It could not produce a final relationship between God and men, and it could not give us an unchangeable standing before God. So where did the Levitical priesthood fall short? What did it fail to procure for his people? Well, under that system, the sins of the people were never taken away. They were only covered, and that just for one year at a time. The duty of a priesthood is to make expiation of sin. That means to take away sin by means of an atoning sacrifice, and that they could never do. Scripture says, for it is not possible 
that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. Then why were these things appointed by God in the first place? If they didn't do any good, if they couldn't take away sins, then why did God appoint this in the first place? Well, the answer is this. They were appointed in order to prefigure the great once for all time sacrifice which was yet to come. So when Christ Jesus came, there was a radical change in the priesthood. There was a new order of priesthood after the order of Melchizedek. And with this radical change in the priesthood, there was another consequence that had to be considered. Verse 12, for the priest being changed, the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. This is the second consequence. First, the Levitical priesthood was inadequate. It was incapable of producing perfection. Second, because the Levitical priesthood was inadequate. Therefore, it was only a temporary institution. And when the Messiah came, the whole system connected with it must be set aside. In other words, Judaism as such was practically now defunct. Because the priesthood is changed, therefore the whole Mosaic system has changed. Because the whole ceremonial law was useless without its priesthood. Of course, you can just imagine the Jews strongly opposed the idea of the law being set aside. They stoned Philip, or no, Stephen it was, they stoned Stephen when he said back in Acts chapter six, verse 14, that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered to us. And he made that statement and he was stoned to death. Jesus will change the rites and the ceremonies of Moses. When Paul taught that the Gentile did not have to be circumcised, what an uproar the Judaizers caused in the churches over that. They accused Paul of setting aside the law of Moses. But my friends, the scripture teaches that when Christ is revealed, then Moses must fade away. You remember on the Mount of Transfiguration, there was Jesus and then there was Moses representing the law and Elijah representing the prophets. There stood Christ and the law and the prophets. And it says, and when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. Moses and Elijah, the law and the prophets had faded away in the presence of the Lord Jesus. Verse 13 in our text, For he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe of which no man gave attendance at the altar. Paul is speaking here about the Lord Jesus. He was of another tribe. Jesus was of the tribe of Judah. He was of the royal line of the house of David. Paul says, no man from the house of Judah ever was a priest. The priesthood was given to the tribe of Levi by divine appointment. The priesthood was given to the tribe of Levi by God himself. No one ever belonging to any other tribe in Israel was ever allowed 
to officiate at the altar or to minister in the holy place. God would not allow it. You remember King Uzziah tried it. He went into the holy place and burned incense and God instantly smote him with leprosy. He went running out of the temple a leper and he lived in a leper colony for the remainder of his days. Uzziah was of the tribe of Judah. He had no business doing the work of a priest. By smiting him with leprosy, God gave a most solemn warning. Verse 14, for it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. Paul here says, Moses never said anything about transferring the priesthood from Levi to Judah. Now all of the believing Hebrews that Paul is writing to, all of them know without a doubt that Jesus was from the tribe of Judah. And all of them believe without a doubt that Jesus is their great high priest. And they all believe that God the Father made him our great high priest, but there was nothing in the law of Moses to allow for such a changeover, yet God has done it. Therefore, it is evident that God himself has set aside the old Levitical order of things. Verse 15 says, and it is yet far more evident what is far more evident? It is far more evident that the old Levitical order is now obsolete. We know that from what follows. Verse 15 says that it is yet far more evident for that, that means because, after the similitude of Melchizedek, there ariseth another priest. There ariseth another priest. Now, God is not going to have two different priesthoods at the same time. The priesthood of Christ is not something that was temporarily put in because of some problem in the Levitical order. No, the priesthood of Christ is a permanent priesthood. It is an abiding ministry it is a priesthood after the order of Melchizedek. That means that it is, a it is a priesthood without end, a priesthood that would last forever. Some would teach that at some time in the future, that old Levitical priesthood, which God has done away with, they teach that that priesthood will be reestablished in Jerusalem and I think that they don't understand the meaning of after the order of Melchizedek. That old priesthood is obsolete. The old order of things was inferior. It has passed away. Behold all things are made new. 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 10 says, But when that which is perfect is come, then that which was in part shall be done away. The Jews of today have very little left of their religion. At the crucifixion, you remember the veil of the temple was torn asunder that veil was about four inches thick. It covered the entire Holy of Holies. It was four inches thick and it was intricately woven, beautifully embroidered, and that veil was torn from top to bottom. The inner sanctuary, the Holy of Holies, was revealed for all to see. 
Paul was writing his letter to the Hebrews around the year 61 AD. It was just eight or nine years later in 70 AD that the temple itself was destroyed. So there could be no more daily sacrifices without a temple. No priesthood to stand between the people and God. There was no more covering for the sins of the people because they could not do their animal sacrifices. There was no more golden labor for their cleansing. No more altar of incense for their praying for the people. There was no more mercy seat, no more presence of God among his people. The Jews no longer have their once a year day of atonement. There is no more laying on of hands upon the head of the scapegoat to take their sins away into the wilderness of forgetfulness. There is no more second goat to sacrifice and to sprinkle his blood upon the mercy seat. That's what these priests were commanded to do of God, but they don't do it anymore. All that Judaism has today is a religion basically that they have invented for themselves. They wear their skull caps and their prayer shawls and they rock back and forth before the wall there in Jerusalem. All they have left is what they have invented for themselves. And they would rather have that than to recognize the words of their own scriptures, which now speak of a new order of priesthood. They would rather have a religion that they have invented than to believe that our great high priest, the Lord Jesus, who was appointed by God himself, Paul described Jesus, our great high priest, in verse 15 and following, if you would read along. And yet it is far more evident for that or because after the similitude, that means after the similarities, after the similitude of Melchizedek, there arises another priest who is made not after the law of carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. For he, that is God, for he testifieth, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. There is a priesthood which now continues. There is now a priesthood which has no end. The Levitical priesthood ended some 2,000 years ago. Their own scriptures tell them that Messiah will be a priest, but not of their priesthood. But they will not accept Jesus and his sacrifice. As it says of them in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 14, but their minds were blinded for until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. I pray that the day will soon come when that veil is taken away from their eyes and they will all come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Brother Red, would you lead us in prayer? Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. And we thank you for the leaders that you put before us, Lord, to help us understand it. Open our hearts to your word today, Lord, as we go into our worship service. Let the Holy Spirit guide us in all things that we do or say that we might bring glory to you, Lord. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.